In this one, we're going to talk about how to actually manage static files and display them in our development environment. So actually having these static files show up. And static files are referred to as images, JavaScript, and CSS. So any of those are considered static files in Django. And what that mainly means is they are going to be served by a different server. So when you actually bring this into production, you will have two servers. You'll have one server for your Django uh, related stuff. And then you'll have another server for all your static files, such as images, JavaScript, and CSS. Um, those things all work together, but there has to be a way to connect those two. And that's what's what we're going to do here for the development environment at first. And then later we'll do it uh, for a production environment as well. And keep in mind what we're doing here should not be used for production because it's probably insecure and it's also very, very inefficient. Um, so it's not something that you should be doing on the development side, uh, but for develop or excuse me on the production side, but for development, it is perfectly okay. And this is the URL right here. This URL does not change really, except for maybe the version number. Uh, but for the most part, this is how you're going to be managing uh, your static files. So we're going to go through each step here, uh, just so you can see kind of what we need to do. One of these things we're actually going to skip because we won't have our templates set up quite yet. Instead, we are going to get all of our static files rolling first. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have static files in our installed apps. So let's go ahead and jump into Sublime Text and go into our settings and look for static files. And here it is right here. That's going to come in by default, uh, which makes sense. It, it should come in by default. And then we want to define our static URL. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this. I'll explain what this static URL does in just a second. And we already have it actually in our settings file. So that's good. And notice the link to where we are is also right here, right in our settings file too. And that should come up right away. As you notice each, more or less each topic that you would, might want to change is also in those links as well. Um, so this URL itself is the URL that's actually going to be serving these static files by default. Um, so like if I changed, let's say for instance, I had an image called image one, it would be static files slash images slash image one dot JPEG. That would be the actual relative link for that image. Um, and that's what the static URL is doing, but I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave that. Obviously you want to leave it as just static. And I'll give us some more room down here because we're going to be working with this a little bit more. Um, all right, so now we we're going to kind of skip number three because we'll actually come back to this in a later video. And now we want to create a folder for our static files, right? So what this is showing us is my app static, my app, and then my image. So in this case, this is actually making a folder that is kind of related to a specific app. Um, and we can change on how these images work and stuff like that. So let's actually make a folder and set up where we want to actually store our static images. Um, now there's a whole lot of different ways you can store it. So we have our source folder here. This is for the entire project, right? So that's kind of what it's saying with my app, um, but we don't have to worry about that. So we can put it in where like our templates are. We could put a folder in here called static. So the first one, I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to save it as let's say static in Pro, pro, like as in static and project, right? So that's going to be the first one. And then I'm going to open up my finder window and I'm going to go into this project itself. So the try Django one eight, and I'm going to put it in here as well. So I'll say, call this static in virtual ENV, or I'll just say static in ENV. And I'm just showing you two different ways on how to do it. You don't have to go this way. But I want to show you two different ways on where you can put static and how this all works. Um, and then it gives you it'll give you a better understanding also of how OS path works as well. Um, all right, so now back in here, we see this static files DIRS. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And this is where you are going to have your static files be. Um, so this is like where we would put our images in our in our um, JavaScript and our CSS. And then we wanted to actually upload somewhere, which we will talk about in just a second, but let's go back into the file or the how-to guide on Django itself. And if we scroll down, um, we actually don't see the static root stuff, which is something, or actually we, we can scroll down completely further and we see static root here. So that's another setting that we actually want. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And what static root is, I'm going to put it right there, is where we aren't going to touch it. So that's the server that it's going to go to. Uh, this is what's going to be served when we actually go live, where the static files dirs is where we put our files and those can actually exist inside of our Django project as you see here, right? But this is outside of our Django project. So static root is really where those static files are going. Um, so we'll see what this does in just a second. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna comment out this, this line right here because that is not relevant to us. We don't have anything that would match that. And that's true with the static root um, example as well, but I'm going to leave it because we don't want errors to run just quite yet. Okay, so now we've got this static files dirs, and let's actually talk about what this is. So base directory, if you remember back to this one with our database, that is where our manage.py is. So that's the root of the project. So this is going to look for a folder called static or a directory called static. In this case, we don't actually have a directory called static. Instead, we have a directory called static in pro. So if I changed it to static in pro, this is now a corrected like actual path to static in pro. Now, what if I wanted to have it to the one that we just created also, which was static in ENV. So let's actually add static in ENV to our project by going up to project. And then we will go to add folder to project. And then we wanna scroll back a little bit and add static ENV, press open. And now that's in here as well. All right, so now we have another location for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this whole thing, paste it below here, and now it's gonna be static in ENV. And we have two now locations for this static files. And we'll explain what this does and you'll see what it does here in just a second. But the main part here, which is a, probably a little confusing, is like how do we actually get to static in ENV? Well, we'll talk about that in just a second after we finish everything else, but it's not going to be like this. This is not the right setting because this folder is not in the same place. All right. Okay. So now we need something for static root. Now I called it static and pro. So inside of static and pro, I'm going to make another new folder in here called static root. All right. So static root is now in here and static and pro is basically are where we want to put our static files where static root is where it's going to be collected. So I'm actually going to add one more folder inside of static and pro and I'll call it R static. And there we go. So now we have R static and static root and static root is just coming from their stuff. So our static file dirs is now a little bit confused, right? So it has base dir static and pro but we actually want to use R static. So we're going to go ahead and comment, do a comma and say R static. Oops, not out, but R static, the name of that folder. So now what's going to happen is we're going to take R static and put it into static root. Before we can do that, we have to actually make sure that static root is the same or more or less the same, but just with a different folder. So let's go ahead and copy this, paste it here and we'll change this R static to static root. Okay, so what's happening here with static root is this command right here is changing the path to fit into that folder, whatever that folder is. All right, so now that we've got this stuff, let's actually add a something inside of R static. And I'll say new folder and I'll call it IMG for image. And in here, I'm just gonna make a new file and I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put a text file in here, even though I have the folder called image, this is where you would put images, but I'm just gonna put a text file so we can see what's going on. And I'll just say example.txt, save that, make sure it's saved, make sure it's in our static, and then I'm gonna close this out. All right, cool. So now we've got our static root set up and our static files theirs. Cool, so now that we've got this, let's do what's called collect static. So this is what would happen, python manage.py collect static. This is what you wanna do when you upload or change your static files. Now in some development environments, so excuse me, some production environments such as heroku.com, whenever you upload your live production code, collect static is ran automatically, which is nice, but we'll see what it does in just a second. So let's go ahead and hit enter. 
and it's saying, this will override existing files. Do you want to do this? So notice, look at this path right here. So the path is going into source, static and pro, static root. So base dir, which is where manage.py is, which is inside of source, right? Source. Um, static and pro, which is what we just defined, which is right here. And then static root, which is right here. Now, if you're on a Windows, you will see something very similar, but it will work with your OS. And it won't say my information, it'll say yours, which is the huge advantage to something like this. And notice that it's saying it's going to um, static root. So it's going into this, this definition right here. It's not going into here. It's actually coming from here. Uh, so it's collecting static files from there, as you specified in your settings. This is the destination, but this is where it's coming from. So we're going to say yes. And notice all this stuff that actually came through. There's actually a lot of things and it had to do with the admin. So if you might have noticed, the admin originally actually had styles. It had coloring. It had everything that it needed, which is good. That's what we wanted to see. Uh, but now we have our static root and our static file. So let's actually take a look inside of our static root and we see admin and IMG. IMG has example.txt. Notice, if you remember correctly, we didn't actually have this folder here before. It wasn't actually there. It wasn't actually doing anything. Um, it was empty. It was just the folder. And this right here added all of that stuff. And then, or it actually added the setting for where that stuff would go. And then collect static actually brought all those statics files together. Now, this is important because when you bring the servers separate or when you separate the servers, this is what you'll have to do. The static files themselves can actually be, or your, your static file DIRs, the ones that you are collecting, can actually be inside your product project, but the static root most likely won't be. In this case, I just had it in there for the sake of example. This time, I'm gonna actually go ahead and delete this static root here, and go ahead and delete that so it's gone. And now what I wanna do is put it in the static in ENV. Uh, that's where I actually want my static root to be. So I'm gonna make a new folder inside of there, and say static root. And so there we go. So that's where we want it. So now let's go and change our static root from static in pro to static in env. But we have a problem. And that is that the base dir is the directory inside of source. So we actually need to go out of that directory and get into this directory. So to do that, we say os.path.dirname of base dir and then the rest of the stuff. So what's going on here is OS path dir name. It's getting the directory name of the base directory, which if you scroll up to the base directory, you'll see it again, right? So it's showing that name as well. Um, so this right here is getting the base directory relative to this settings file. So the absolute path of the settings file, whatever that is on this system, um, so if we look into our project itself, that's this right here, right? So, and then the directory name of where that file is, is try Django 18. And then the directory name of that folder is source. And that's what base directory is. Um, so that's kind of how that works. So we scroll back down and we see now we've got the static root and this actually will change where our static root is. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And I'm gonna collect the files again and say yes. Uh, we can scroll up just to see that, look at our, our stuff is actually showing up correctly. Notice the source is no longer in there, but try Django 18, the name of our virtual environment is in there. And then static ENV is also in there and static root. Um, so again, there's a lot more to OS, the Python library itself, uh, but this is something that we use a little bit or quite a bit actually in Django uh, for stuff like this. Cool, so this also means that um, our static file DIRS, we could have it in this static and ENV as well, but it's not necessary. It's only necessary really for a static root. The static file DIRS should probably exist in your project uh, because then it keeps your project all in one place. Where your static root, the, the files that are related to your project but need to be served elsewhere should be separate. So you'd wanna keep these things separate. Uh, that being said, the static file DIRS can also be where your static root is, but you want to make sure that you know where to actually upload your files when you make changes. 
you don't want to upload your files directly to the static root. You want Django to do that for you um, because there's other things that you might be missing, such as other apps. So in the case that admin came through, that's something that you definitely want to happen. So if you ever add in um, a third party like app, installed apps, right? So a third party installed app, which they have, um, Collect Static will make sure that their static files are coming through too, and it'll bring it to wherever your static root is. So keep that in mind when you're doing stuff like this. And also your own static files, having them within your project will keep your project a little bit more simple and it will make it easier to maintain. And then static root is just another place. And Django handles all of those collecting of static files to this other area very, very well. Okay, so there's one other thing that we might want to add and that's called media URL and media root. So media URL and media root. And the difference between static and media has to do with the end users. So, or yourself even, or your team, whatever's being uploaded on Django or like outside of the code side of things where you're not dragging it manually into the directories that they, they exist, that is media. So say for instance, you want to change your profile picture, that is media, whether it's done by the end user or your staff. If the profile picture is being saved in the database somehow, the, that's what media is going to be doing. So media is very similar. You can do it inside of slash media for the media URL and then whatever media routes you want to put it in, that's where it's going to go. So for us, it can go where the static route goes to I'll copy that. But instead of static and in, in, instead of static root, you could just say media root. All right. And then we're going to add a new folder here, call it media root. And now we've got that folder set up. So this is where you would upload files. We're not going to worry about that quite yet, but it is something to, to at least set at this point. Cool. So now that we've got this, we are pretty much ready to actually get our project up and going. Um, but the one thing that you do want to make sure about this is that you set these things and you understand what's going on here because you might watch or see different settings for all of this stuff. But to know, like, for example, if you were using uh, Amazon S3, you would not see this call right here. So if you're using Amazon's servers for your static files, you would not see something like this. You would see a little bit different of a setting here, but you should know that in your mind, you should be like, okay, well, this is a different setting for the root, but the root is where my static file DIRs are being sent to, right? So they're sending it from here and it's going here. And the media is the same thing, but where it's being sent from would be the user or whoever's doing the uploading of some kind. So it's not really sent automatically, it's sent manually. It's sent when users actually interact with your service. Um, so that's the difference. So this one is internal. This is where it's going to be collected to and served from. And then that's the same as this. This is where it's going to be uploaded to and served from as well. Um, so there is other things that you can do such as protected root or protected media. Like if you wanted it to be served only occasionally, you could also do stuff like that as well. Um, but in general, this will be always live, right? So your CSS will always be on because you want it to be. And you also want a different server using this because it's static. It doesn't change very much and it doesn't need the kind of permissions. Um, and that will also help it load and do all sorts of great things. All right, so if you have any questions on this, I know it's a lot, but uh, let us know. In the next one, we're actually gonna show you how to actually serve these files in the development environment. And then after that, we will show you how to actually put in real CSS, real images, and real JavaScript so you can use those in your local environment and also um, get you set up for your production. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, let's keep going.